So today I'm going to uh, talk about uh, uh, this paper, uh, Collaborative uh, Large Language Models for uh, Recommender Systems. Uh, so my name is Trin Dongli. I'm currently an assistant professor uh, from the University of Virginia and also worked as a part-time uh, in LinkedIn as a LinkedIn scholar. Uh, so, so this work was uh, laid by my uh, PhD student, Yao Chen. Uh, unfortunately, he cannot be here due to expired US visa. And also with the colleagues in LinkedIn, Liang Qi and Liang Jie. Okay. Uh, so this is a recommender system session, right? So this is also a web conference. I don't think I need to emphasize the importance of the recommender systems. Uh, so generally speaking, that uh, we have a bunch of users and we have a bunch of items, right? Our goal is that we want to uh, suggest some new users to uh, new new items to users based on their personalized interest, right? So traditionally, that this kind this kind of problem can be formulated as a a kind of the matrix imputation problem. We have some observed interactions. We're trying to impute the missing values, right? Uh, so the field of the recommender systems has uh, uh, long been uh, dominated by the so-called ID-based uh, uh, learning paradigm. Right? So the matrix factorization, uh, as you all know, that is a very popular method in the old days. Right? So uh, we're trying to decompose the user uh, item interaction matrix into a user embedding and the uh, item embedding matrix. Right? So the total product between the user vector and the item vector will be approximate the uh, observed user item interactions, okay? And now there's an in industry that a very popular method is called the two tower model, right? So uh, we have two branches, right? so they are instantiated by some neural networks to learn the user embeddings and the item embeddings, right? And also their total product, basically, uh, we can make use of it to approximate the uh, real interactions, okay? So the commonality for these two uh, different families approaches is that they represent each user an item with a unique and a continuous ID embedding, right? Um, but we all know that there are some limitations for these kind of ID-based recommender systems. Right? One major limitation is that they cannot well handle the uh, textual information. Right? So for example, we may have a lot of uh, textual features for the users and items, right? They are very useful to provide some uh, context information to understand the user behaviors and the characteristics of the items, right? Okay. So um, nowadays, uh, the large language model has become very hated topic, right, in both academia and industry. So uh, for the large language model, we can do some pre-training on large-scale corpora, right? So it has demonstrated the emergent capability and also show uh, unprecedented understandings of the knowledge and the patterns in the natural language, right? So it revolutionized many aspects of our, our daily life, right? So for example, it can help us write things more proficiently, uh, can help us uh, write code, right? can also uh, help the general public to get information pro more promptly, right? So therefore that it is natural to think whether this kind of a success can be shifted to the uh, the field of the recommend recommendation, right? So for this work that we're trying to develop uh, uh, the next generation recommender systems uh, based on the pre-trained large language models, trying to fully utilize their uh, encoded knowledge, their reason logical reasoning capability, and their generative power by right? trying to understand the user item semantics and make more accurate recommendations, okay? Uh, but to solve this kind of problem, there, there are some challenges, right? So there are some inherent gaps between the uh, the language modeling and the recommendation task itself, okay? Uh, so first we can see that uh, uh, to do some language modeling, right? the first step is that we typically need to do some tokenization for the words, right? So if we perform this kind of the tokenization for the uh, item IDs, right? So for example, for this specific laptop, uh, item 9527, right? we have ID for this item. So we get four tokens, okay? And let's see if we have a different item, right? Which is about a t-shirt, item 95, right? So if we do the tokenization, we actually get a, a three atomic tokens, right? So although these two items are quite dis uh, different from each other, but they share actually three tokens out of four, right? So there are some superior correlations that I may introduce for these uh, totally irrelevant uh, items, okay? So that is the uh, one problem. And the other problem is that uh, for the natural language, typically it's performed in an auto-regression manner. Right? We perform, we make the prediction for one token and then for the other, right? So then for this particular example, for this uh, particular item ID, right? If we want to make a recommendation, basically we need to predict these four tokens in a, uh, in a sequence, but there are need to, we need to have four steps to make a recommendation. So this is uh, super 
inefficient. Okay. So to address this kind of problem, that uh, our contribution for this work is that we uh, propose one of the first method trying to uh, tightly couple the ID-based uh, uh, ID based recommendation and the powerfulness of the large language model. Okay. So more specifically, that we propose a new uh, pre-training strategy. Uh, so in a way that we want to uh, learn some uh, user and I item ID token embeddings to ensure that they are well aligned with the uh, large language model vocabulary space to capture the intrinsic user uh, interest and item properties. Okay, and we also propose a new fine tuning strategy. Right, so in this way that we can uh, recommend multiple items simultaneously. Otherwise, that we have to write uh, all the candidate items in the prompts, which would be uh, super inefficient, and it may also introduce some hallucination problem. So uh, for this kind of the new paradigm that combines the ID-based recommendation and the large language model, right, as we mentioned that uh, uh, we first are trying to ex extend the vocabulary of pre-trained large language models uh, with the user and item ID tokens, trying to uh, faithfully model the user item collaborative and the content semantics. Okay? So the first question here is that how can we effectively learn the user item ID token embeddings? So our pre-training strategy is based on kind of the soft and hard prompting strategy. So uh, let's take a look at this example, right? So we have a user item interaction matrix, right? So let's say uh, we have a specific user item interaction, right? So we can transform this kind of the user item interaction into some natural language, right? So for example, on the right-hand side, we have this kind of the natural language, like the user I has interacted with the item J, item K, and many other items, right? So we have some observations from this kind of the natural language. So the first, the, the, we can observe that basically this kind of natural language can be split into two different parts, right? For the first part is the combination of the blue and the green part, right? So basically we call it to be the context part. For this context part, we have the heterogeneous user and the vocabulary tokens, right? And uh, for the yellow part, we call it the completion part. So that's the part is for the large language, uh, for the large language model to complete. Right? So for this part, we only have the homogeneous item tokens. Right? So this is the user item interactions. So let's also take a, a look at uh, another example about the content corpora. Right? So here we can also uh, reformulate the content corpora into some natural language. Right? So for this for this example, we can see that the user I uh, write the review for item J, right? And also it comes along with the, the main text for the user reviews, okay? And again, we can see that this kind of the content document can also be split into two parts, right? For the first part, uh, it's basically the, the, uh, the blue, uh, green, and the yellow part. So this is part also consists of the heterogeneous user item and the vocabulary tokens. Right. And for the completion part, for the last part, we can see that we only have the homogeneous vocabulary tokens. Right. So why we are doing this? So here we can see that we can review, we can view the heterogeneous context as a kind of the soft and hard prompt. Right. For the hard prompt, basically means that we have the uh, already have the embeddings for the vocabularies. Right. For the soft, basically we want to learn the uh, token embedding for the users and items. Okay. So in this way that by doing this kind of modeling, right, we can see that the natural uh, language modeling can only be focused on the homogeneous part, right? We only need to do the, uh, the language completion for either the vocabulary tokens or either for the item tokens, right? Compared with some traditional strategies that have to predict the heterogeneous user item and the vocabulary tokens simultaneously. So by doing this, we can actually make the training to be more stable and more effective, okay? So this is the key idea for this kind of approach. And the second question here is that uh, how to use the large language model and the learn the user item embeddings for the recommendation, right? So for the previous uh, soft and uh, hard prompting, right? Although that we are performing some natural language modeling, but this kind of modeling is not tailored for the recommendation task itself, right? Still we want, the, we want to do some recommendation. 
right? So therefore that uh, we propose a kind of the uh, recommendation oriented fine tuning strategy, okay? So what we do here is that uh, for each user, right, we're trying to mask out certain items that the user has interacted with, okay? And we're trying to predict the uh, holdout items, okay? So there are two tricks here. So the first trick is that uh, in many cases that the orders for these items does not really matter for the natural language modeling, right? So therefore that we perform some uh, stochastic random permutation by right, trying to ensure that we can uh, randomly uh, shuffle the orders for the items. And the second trick here is that, uh, uh, as we mentioned, right, so uh, to avoid the hallucination problem, typically that uh, people have to write all the candidate items in the prompt, right? Otherwise, we may uh, recommend something that does not even exist, right? So to avoid this kind of the hallucination problem, so we propose uh, to use a, multi, a multinomial prediction head trying to predict uh, multiple items simultaneously, right? So in the other words, for this kind of fine tuning, we don't want to predict the one item after another. We want to predict the multiple items simultaneously. Okay, so uh, let's look at some uh, experimental evaluations. So first, uh, we uh, perform some experiments on some public available data sets. Right? So this is uh, from the Amazon. Right? So we have the Amazon Beauty, Amazon uh, uh, Toys, and Amazon Sports. Okay? We also have an example about the uh, user item uh, textual information. Right. So here are some of our evaluation results. We compare our method, uh, we call it LM for REC, uh, with some ID-based methods and also some uh, other existing uh, LM-based uh, baselines. Right? Generally speaking, we can see that uh, our method actually uh, achieves good performance, okay? And additionally, that uh, we also perform some experiments on a real-world uh, situation. We deploy these algorithms for the LinkedIn job recommendation system, okay? So here is that we have some descriptions for the users and we also have some descriptions for the jobs. Mm -hmm. The task is to recommend some uh, suitable uh, jobs to the users, okay? So here we compare uh, this method with uh, the two tower model. Uh, this is uh, actually the model that is has been deployed in the LinkedIn uh, job, job recommendation systems, okay? And we also compare with some other uh, method called the M6 retrieval. So basically for this method, we use the other language model to encode the user item features, uh, but for the final stage, we are doing the matching, okay? And we also compare a variant for the model, we call it the LM rec uh, embedding. So basically it uh, uses the uh, the embeddings learned by our model, right? but for the final stage, we are doing the matching, okay? So we can also see that uh, uh, this method actually uh, greatly improves the recommendation performance, right? So uh, in the real world situation, okay? So uh, so the key takeaway message for this paper is that uh, uh, we propose probably one of the first strategy trying to uh, tightly couple the advantage of the ID-based uh, re uh, recommendation and the, uh, the language modeling, okay? So we propose a new pre-training strategy based on the soft and hard prompting. And also we propose a uh, uh, recommendation-oriented fine-tuning strategy. So that's uh, uh, over my talk. So thanks for listening. Any questions?